members, as we have our quorum, we'll open this meeting. Clever, like please have silence. We'll continue. Thank you. I wish to advise that this meeting of the committee will be streamed live and recorded for publishing on the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside Australia. In addition to our normal live feed tonight, we are also streaming to the City of Adelaide Facebook page. The council acknowledges that we are meeting on traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and we pay respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge that they are of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. And we also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present with us. Item two, I have an apology from Councillor Martin who is sick today and we wish him a speedy recovery. Um, I don't think I have anything else or any others. <laughs> Oh, welcome, Councillor Moran. Uh, confirmation of the minutes. Can I please have a mover and a seconder for the minutes? Thank you, Councillor Noel. Second of Councillor Ho. Any discussion, members? Put that to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Sorry, Councillor Sims and Moran. Sorry. Those, do they get those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Moving on to item 4.1, temporary use of public space policy. And I think Mark is going to say a few words about this one. Thanks, Chair. Um, just want to alert Council to the significance of this work. Um, when you first read it, it may not seem to be that significant. But the temporary use of public space has been an issue that's challenged Council um, for the time I've been on Council because it often presents problems that need to be addressed. Um, so I think it's really good to establish some guiding principles that are what you describe as enabling. Um, and in the past, we've had lengthy debates about objects on footpaths and about street permits and a range of different things. We've never really had guiding principles upon which to judge, make judgments on. So the aim is to set um, a foundation for the simplification of our permit system and. Now, the team has been doing a really good job led by Vanessa in that regard and it will enable further consideration and simplification of our permit system in the future when we bring back further reports to you, which I think is a really good thing. So it's, it's part of our endeavour to make things easier and make business easier um, with Council and uh, to enable you to make quality decisions at the same time. But Vanessa, if you'd like to lead off from here, is there anything else you'd like to add? No? All good? Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Vanessa. Councillors, any discussion on this? Councillor Simmons. No, it's actually just to give some feedback to um, say thank you for the work on this. I had a read through. I think this really does um, capture some of the issues that we do with, uh, with management of public space. So thank you. Thank you, members. Anything else? Questions? Discussion? No? Okay, <laughs> thank you. Four point two, honouring female leaders in the city of Adelaide. Claire. So uh, thank you, Chair. Um, so tonight we have a report in, in, in response to a recent motion on notice. Um, asking us to have a think about how we better reflect uh, the leadership that um, women have shown um, across the state and um, for the city over uh, many years. You remember it was a bit of a wake up call for many of us when we sat in the chamber the other week to notice that the one and only female portrait um, in the council chamber is that of the Queen. Um, so building on the work um, that we did last year in support of um, Council and the Lord Mayor's recognition of the 125th anniversary of women's suffrage in South Australia, um, Stacey and the team have um, built a set of criteria um, and I'm making a recommendation tonight um, to start to move towards a more equitable uh, showcase of uh, leaders um, from their state and the city. From a budget perspective, we're proposing that we fund this from our existing 1.3% of public art spend that we raise through our capital expenditure each year. 
um, noting there will be a small requirement um, to allocate to, uh, to a professional to come in and actually hang some portraits. So any questions? We have Stacey and Sandra here to answer them. Thank you. Members, any feedback on this recommendation, discussion, questions? Everyone's very happy. Um, I might just say thank you for the work. I think it was um, I think it was really good. Um, former Lord Mayor Wendy Chapman actually rang me on the weekend um, just to see how it was going and was pleased to give her an update. And she was very very happy. Um, and, and, and she extended that thanks to the Lord Mayor as well. Lord Mayor. Um, yes, also to say thank you and um, for giving consideration. Uh, I know you did a, quite a bit of work at looking who was already in the chamber so that we look at different periods of history. Um, so I think um, um, just in terms of uh, understanding the, the selection criteria that you're trying to use for that. Um, I, I think the time you said if we, uh, if we do commission would be five months or so for painting of Mary Chapman, would that be right? When does that take us to Okay, so, um, so that would be good to maybe lock that down once we sort of in terms of if there's a timing so that it connects with anything, that we can do something special around that as well. Yes, thank you. Through the Chair, I'll just note that uh, we do have to still go through a proper um, procurement process for that, so the available um, availability of the, the female artist will be have to take into consideration. So we're saying approximately uh, six months, um, however, it may be a little bit longer than that, just depending on when they're available, when the chosen person can start. Oh, that's great, thank you. Members, Councillor Martin. Uh, we naturally are supported um, in a form um, as uh, with the female members of council that got the uh, board out there with the very few female councils. I'm generally not against, uh, not particularly for affirmative action, and I don't uh, actually commissioning paintings. I rather would rather use the paintings we've got. Uh, which is very few in the chamber were commissioned. They were paintings that were either paid for by the person themselves. Um, I don't see why we don't stick Jane Lomax Smith in the chamber. We've got a great picture there, and uh, it's for nothing. So I'm lukewarm about this, really. I, I think it's great that we honour female leaders, and this council has an excellent record of doing that. But to add extra expense of commissioning paintings, um, I'll vote for it, but I, I'm not I might just highlight that um, uh, I think it, I think it is I think it's worthwhile to to do to do commissioning, considering the era that a lot of the paintings come from. Yes, a lot of those men commissioned the paintings themselves. Um, uh, the women that we're seeking to honour perhaps didn't necessarily have the means, particularly. In, um, with the Indigenous leaders on there as well to commission their own paintings that it might just not have been the done thing. So I think we're sort of making up for that um, uh, for that gap there. So if there's no other feedback, we'll go on to 4.3. Okay, thank you. Item 4.3, Atmospheric Lighting in O'Connell Street and Melbourne Street. All right, do you want to read us off? Thanks, Chair. As you would know, this is a response to a resolution of council. Um, it's taken some time to respond to the resolution of council due to the complexities, um, as can be seen, within the report, which is very, in my, my view, um, comprehensive. Due to the um, due to the need, um, I think, of council to be quite clear on this, I'd like to make sure you understand that the. Um, any approval at council next week for one or all or, or whatever of the recommendations uh, will be subject to constraint by the 2020-21 budget. So just to make that really clear, um, and it would be included along with a lots of other bids as well. So um, whilst it'd be really good to get some feedback on on the, um, the report uh, next week, um, it would be listed as part of the budget consideration. So I just want to make it clear before we go any further. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Keith, Shanti, was there anything further you wanted to add to that? 
uh, through the chair, uh, thank you, Mark, for that intro. One other, or a couple of other things to note is we are working on the three Main Street uh, master plans for Melbourne Street, Hutt Street, and O'Connell Street. Um, so there would be opportunities identified through that work when uh, we finally present it into council. Um, short, fairly shortly, we hope. Um, to investigate use of some of the atmospheric lighting uh, as part of that work as well. So um, we see there are opportunities using existing budgets to, to try and deliver some of what is being proposed. Um, so um, the, the presentation that we've made really gives opportunity to sort of do a bit of a mix and match approach depending on where uh, the atmospheric lighting uh, is intended to be uh, located. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Oh, sorry, Councillor Simpson. No, 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 no. Um, I'll just uh, thank you. Um, just in terms of that comment, when you said there may be some budget available to deliver some of this, because I, I would uh, dare say that a, a, um, a $956,000 um, cost was not really the intention um, of some atmospheric lighting. Um, and so I, I'm sort of curious as to what um, what the budget may allow us to do and what would have to go into consideration because if it came through as a lump sum, I don't want it to disappear entirely if, no. if it came through that way. Uh, thank you, uh, through the chair. Um, uh, that's a really great question. So um, I would uh, sort of um, reframe what's being presented is sort of if we were to deliver a fully blown atmospheric lighting proposal, that's what the cost would look like. Um, however, there are opportunities to look at temporary installations, for example, um, using the SPLASH program to assist with delivery of some of these things. Um, they uh, could be temporary, they could be on trial, um, and we would need to test uh, to see whether some of those options um, actually work in some localities or not. Um, but if, uh, if the Chamber and Council were wanting to sort of investigate a particular solution, then we would need to investigate how that would be possible uh, and, and obviously the cost would be much larger. Councillor Simpson. And look, uh, thank you uh, to administration for this report. Um, I thought it was quite illuminating. Um, there's some good, um, good uh, options um, presented for consideration um, and you've certainly shone a light on the costs. Um, but I, I will say, um, when, I, um, when I proposed this, uh, I, I didn't envisage um, that it would be quite so costly. However, um, it is excellent to get a breakdown of what some of the different opportunities are um, and what's available to us. Obviously, in terms of what we do, that will be dependent on the broader budget. Um, my view, though, is that I really would like to see us do something um, in Melbourne Street um, and O'Connell Street during this budget cycle. Um, in particular, Melbourne Street, I know um, there have been concerns raised by um, business groups in that area over a long period of time. It is actually a very dark street. Um, and um, so I think there really is an imperative to do something there. Um, the great thing about this report is um, it gives, you know, a range of different options for us to consider. So. Um, I'm hopeful we'll be able to get something in this budget cycle. Thank you. Councillor Kira. Thanks. Um, the flower lighting sculpture option, um, it's unfortunately pricey. It's very appealing, I must say, to me. Um, can there be less of them? Can you have a smaller version of it? Through the chair, yes, certainly there's a unit um, price attached to that, so that's yeah. uh, giving an expression of the intent for those for those entries. So it's not a it's not a discrete work. It, we can pick and choose how many flowers we want, sort of thing. But <laughs> <laughs> it's like a frolicking in a meadow. Uh, through the chair, yes. However, in terms of the intent and the impact, the less than yeah. the less that impact. All right. Um, and the under awning light, what's 
the experience uh, the, the facade lighting what's the experience with that do you do you end up getting because i you know really what we want is to help a uh, streets with lots of vacancies um, uh, and darkness but do you end up with do you end up exacerbating that problem in that do you get the tenanted buildings get the underwarning light in and so they're even more lit and the untenanted buildings stay dark uh, do you have any experience with with these grants are they pan out uh, through the chair, it, that's a very interesting point that you raised. We would be hopeful, though, that we, through the master planning process and engagement um, through those projects, that we have those conversations. And this was really to seek a budget to realise those opportunities. So, yes, it would follow that people who are obviously <coughs> active and engaged in that precinct would be the ones that would apply. Anyway, just a just consideration. Um, okay, so yeah, I gather it's all going to go through budget and whatever, but uh, I, I do like the, I, I like oh, what's proposed with the images. I like the cluster of flowers. I, th I think they're, they're, um, they're pleasant. They look really pleasant during the day and night. I suspect they'd have public approval. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, I'm not a fan of the um, sort of public art proposal. I don't know that, <coughs> um, don't know that streets with vacant shops at night uh, will be helped by uh, graffiti that's illuminated or something that essentially gives that effect of graffiti that's illuminated. I don't know whether that's going to attract, is going to achieve the final outcome, which is to instill uh, commercial confidence into the streets. Um, and the under warning light is, 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 I think, is a very good one, given that that's relatively cheap. Um, if the outcome can be um, alleviating the darkness that currently dissuades customers from uh, potentially walking down these streets. Thank you, Councillor Simpson, Councillor Noel, and Councillor Donald. Um, look, I do agree with uh, Councillor Kira about um, the flowers. It's good to um, know that we could, if we went down that path, potentially reduce the number. Um, not the first time a tall poppy's been cut down in North Adelaide, I'm sure. Oh, um, but I think um, <laughs> I think um, it's uh, it's worth looking at. I guess the only other um, point that I'd make is um, I think it's really critical there's consultation as well with relevant stakeholders in terms of any design or um, any rollout. So I'd, I'd want to see that uh, factored in too, and to make sure that you know people are happy with what's being proposed and that it meets their needs. Councillor Knott. In, <clears throat> when I looked through it, I thought uh, when when we first raised it in the, in the motion, uh, and this is about the, the streets. So this is about uh, the darkness where you may mention. So it's about so that may be partially about our lighting overall. And is it uh, you know, are we able to look at that as just as a as a point so that you bring that more uh, light uh, to the street when it's darker? The other is it's about when people are uh, are coming to these streets. Uh, that it has a certain feel about them. And I see that most of these things are at the entrances uh, to like a Coral Street or to Bourbon Street and things like that, rather than necessarily the street in itself. So one is a statement, an entry statement for the city, not necessarily a particular enhancement of a, of a streetscape. So certainly the, the, you know, the facade of lighting, things like that, is quite you know, lovely, etc. I mean, the, the, the interesting items, so if we talk about this clustered seat uh, lighting, I mean, something of that is interesting, why? Because at night time, it has its own ambience, it creates its own attention, but also while doing that, it also illuminates the actual streetscapes, etc. as well. So it's very specific about being here, because I mean, the one is again, one is an interest in the city, the other is more about when I'm here, the, the interesting things that we can do here or, or uh, things that are, um, you know, that are noteworthy that you can talk to people about. So I, I'm far more around what we're doing actually on the street and certainly the public art, and I looked at it, these are all generally being projected on side streets. Now, okay, uh, unless unless you've got a, a, a bit more about these side streets, like if you've got a on the street, uh, they've got people everywhere, so they, 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 you have this interest, uh, you know, and you're, you're actually getting value out of it. Whereas here, uh, let's face it, we're trying to get people to the streets, so until we're actually able to fill the street up and, and create then, uh, more activity in the, in the side streets, uh, then you're not really getting the exaggerated you know, value for, from what you're doing there. So for me, brighten up the streets, you know, make them warm and inviting and, and uh, you know, certainly a light and so that the people can feel safe, but also interesting so that you know, while I'm here, this is an interesting uh, place because we're all going to somewhere at this time of night. You're not hanging around the street. 
Um, so therefore it is an entry to whatever we're doing and it's just an interesting thing while we're in this space. So that, yeah, that's, that, that's you know, my main thoughts around that. And I'm just intrigued how we got the three different options where it's more about a mix and match. Councillor Donovan, then Councillor Cross. Thank you. Um, they look great. I think there's always going to be um, people who will prefer one or the other. Is there a suggestion as to, from our lighting experts, as to if a budget were allocated, where to from here in terms of those options? So are you looking for us to say, yes, go forward with the flowers, for example, or to say, here's a chunk of money that we would like to allocate to this and you as the experts then guide us as to where to go with that chunk of money? Um, through the chair, ultimately, um, it's council's prerogative to um, make that call. Um, we feel that with the three Main Street master plan projects underway, that will help to guide where we can start focusing our energy in terms of outcomes, um, premised, of course, on um, engagement with <coughs> the community within those spaces to understand what they think as well. Um, given that there is limited budget at the moment, we would look at some temporary solutions and sometimes actually employing a, a temporary approach will either um, define what's going to work or what's not going to work or what people love or what people hate. Um, and so um, this is literally a, a series of options which can be mixed, matched, um, more or less, um, it's it's certainly not it's not a, an ultimate solution where you have to pick the whole thing. So, um, in summarising, I think we would encourage council to think about um, being quite targeted, uh, depending on which street and what outcomes uh, wish to be achieved on each of those streets. So, if for example we said yes, go ahead with flowers and public art, for example and there's some indicative costs, what would be the process from there? How, how would that then proceed to a plan? Or is that what you're looking for, that kind of yes, go with A and B or one and four? Or what is it? If, Where if would you go from there? If, count, if we were to take the example of the flowers and council were to uh, decide that the flowers being uh, placed in the location is, as identified, uh, on page 23, um, and whether it was one or all of them, uh, we would investigate how we could deliver that. Yes. Councillor Cross. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Um, fantastic, great, um, long overdue. We've been waiting for this for a very long time. Um, it, uh, all the reasons, as everyone has just uh, talked about tonight, today, uh, it is dark in Melbourne Street. It needs it needs to be lit up, um, but obviously not bright. But atmosphere creating the atmospheric lights will be perfect. Traders have been asking for that for a very long time. Um, same with O'Connell Street. So I would say yes, of course, because you know we're really wanting that, but obviously having to be mindful um, of the spend here that we do have. Um, I'm um, I'm glad that we're going to be um, you know uh, incorporating the master plan you know, with where we're going to put everything as well with the long term plan, but we do need some short term wins as well. Um, I don't want to sit there waiting for the uh, master plan to come into effect and have it to be built, and et cetera, et cetera, and then we everything gets lost in the wayside. So I'm glad also that we can have Splash incorporated in starting trialling how um, uh, the public will um, welcome the lights that we do place on temporary solutions to see how, how um, the public are feeling it in the area. The hearts that we had there just recently were great. Um, the, the lights just drew people into O'Connell Street and into Melbourne Street, taking photographs, et cetera, Instagram. So it is much overdue. So. I mean, I would say yes to everything, but of course we have to be realistic. So I look forward to putting it in the budget and seeing where we go. Councillor Moran. I don't really understand the reluctance to spend the one million dollars on two major streets in North Adelaide when we glibly spent 18 million dollars on Gawler Place that didn't really need it because all the shops were actually filled and uh, there were no vacancies in Gawler Place. 
Uh, it's very pretty and it's lovely, but why is there this sort of <gasps> one million dollars? Um, it isn't long overdue. Um, both of those streets had a very lovely um, do over, but some time ago, so not much has been spent on it since because not much needed to be spent on it. But now, because of the downturn in trade and the empty shops, something that gives it a bit more sizzle is obviously necessary. And the council's responded thanks to this motion very quickly. But I, I don't see why we can't spend the million dollars. These are two major streets through uh, that are not just for North Adelaide, they're also part of the city. Um, so I, I don't know why we, we everybody's sort of sneaking around this and saying, no, it's been a million dollars. The money we spend on other things that would not deliver the bang that this would is ridiculous. I mean, we can tighten our belts on internal lighting or staff costs or something, but this is quite an important project. And uh, I think we should be mean-spirited about it. It's a million dollars, it's a lot of money in anybody's terms. This council spends money very freely on other things. Portraits for ex-Lady Mayoresses. I'll scrap that for the time being. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Members, any further feedback? No, I'll just ask you a question. Um, I'm looking at uh, was it page well, 28, um, where you've actually given given the options, and it's very clear, gateway statement, 416,000 and so on, one to five. Um, would those be presented as individual options in in for budget consideration, or would you lump it together? That's what I haven't been able to garner yet from the conversation. Um, through the chair, um, back to the main streets master plans, um, we are looking at coming into council with some options on that. So that is going to hopefully inform this conversation as well. Um, so um, ultimately, if council wished to spend $956,000, um, we would be directed to spend that and we would look at undertaking that. We are, um, these are literally options um, which Council uh, should consider. Yeah, and so I guess maybe this is a question to Claire. Is this going to come in in the form of uh, a sort of a wish list essentially? And we're going to pick and choose what's in the budget. I'm just trying to determine are we going to get, are we going to get um, 956,000 as a line in the budget or are we going to get maybe that as a headline with these individual options to make it easy? for councils if they wish to say, I think we should do this one, but not that one. Uh, thank you, Chair. So as we shared last week, we do have some pressures on our expenditure um, as well as on our funding side um, of the balance sheet. Um, at this stage, I'm yet to see what the draft infrastructure programme looks like. And I know Clinton and the team have been working hard to pull that together. Um, we usually bring in a very long list um, of infrastructure projects um, and then we often draw a line at the amount available for funding um, and anything below the line is unfunded and could be moved to a future year and anything above the line is funded. So I'd be expecting uh, Clinton and the team to have uh, develop something similar um, to bring back to um, the 24th of March workshop. So you'll have full visibility of each of the infrastructure projects um, with a, um, a dollar quantum um, for council members to confirm um, what they want to fund. Okay, thank you. If there's no further questions, we'll move on. Thank you, Shanti and Keith. Moving on to 4.4, Ghana Community Hub in the Adelaide Parklands. Claire. Um, thank you. So for quite a number of years, we've been working closely with uh, the Ghana Yerta Aboriginal Corporation and Marty um, has built a very strong and trusted relationship with the community um, to try and see if we can help them find a home uh, within the city of Adelaide. Um, what we're proposing tonight is um, asking that the CEO um, commence lease negotiations um, to see if we can um, 
tra transition um, Ghaniota into the old railway station. Um, the challenge around this is that there are various conversations that Ghaniota have been having at the federal level um, and with state government around suitable funding. So the report does note and outline some costs that are needed to bring the building up to scratch and to enable Ghaniota to move in. However, um, the ask on the City of Adelaide is completely unknown at this stage, um, but to enable Ghaniota to seek and source um, funding, um, both at the federal and state level, they do actually need to commence lease negotiations. Uh, so what we're proposing is that the CEO um, get that delegation to start that discussion, and obviously anything that um, has an impact um, on council's budget would be considered by council as appropriate. Right. Just got a couple of questions. Are we going to consult on this in any way? It is part plans. Not at this stage, no. The, the plan was that uh, uh, under the uh, leasing, the, the park on leasing licensing policy, we uh, uh, we are treating this as an exceptional circumstance, uh, a consistent action with the straight track reconciliation. Action plan, so it wasn't uh, deemed necessary to. What is that? Uh, what is the exceptional circumstance? I mean, obviously, a good organisation and worthy, but what, why is what? What's the definition of an exceptional circumstance? It is part land, yeah. and this is a private use. Granted, yes, but I. I I mean, look, just as we're talking about things like the aquatic centre, this will not be open to the public. It is a private use. I know it's a worthy cause, but I don't see that. I don't like seeing this just being presented when it's obviously far way down the path. When before this, we've always opened this to the public to tender very reasonably unsuccessfully. Um, and there are other organisations like Bike SA and other people that were interested in this. So I'm. Um, you know, it's an awkward one to say because it's such a worthy um, organisation, but this is the park lands. Mm -hmm. So, put my mind at rest that we're not going to rush into this. Sure. Thank you. Through the chair. So, there's two levels of consultation that can take place. Um, the first one that we usually deal with is the expression of interest process, which I think is what you're referring to, Councillor Moran. And then we have under the Local uh, Government Act a requirement to consult on a lease of so five years. In this circumstance, we're going back into the policy to say that there are exceptional circumstances, sorry, exceptional circumstances that exist to continue negotiating with Ghana for this site because of the alignment with reconciliation stretch goals, which is an endorsed position by council. So if the mood of the council at council next week is that they don't agree, then that is a vote that can be had on the floor. So you haven't gone out for an EOI. This no, has just no. been a, a, a bit like the crows. It's an unsolicited bid. Uh, yeah. Through the chair, yeah, may I just say that we yeah. have been working with Ghana for some time to find. Well, why haven't, with all due respect, why haven't we known this? This is an important North Adelaide um, parkland building, mm -hmm. and we're getting a fake compli here. Because it's Ghana, it's very awkward to argue against, argue against it or put it without being accused of being um, you know, not supportive of the Indigenous people. So it is a very sensitive one. And now we're seeing it a fait accompli. Um, I noticed that it's have, going to have a training facility for Ghana and non-Ghana youth. Now, I don't want a youth training centre just broadly. Is that mean uh, other Indigenous <laughs> clans, is it? Or are we just going to have a training centre for disenfranchised youth down in the parklands? It, it was really, that refers to, it's it's a base for uh, Ghana trainees. So there's a Ghana trainee ranger program. So it's a program for young. So it's uh, non-Ghana youth. Do you mind speak to Through the chair, we, um, we're keen to find and house the uh, Ghana Yurta find a, a location for this. This location is ours, it's an asset that we own, it's, it's been available for some time. This has been through APLA, uh, who have, um, have, have progressed it to this point. So we're, we're seeking that we continue negotiations. What happens within the within the, um, the hub as such is an office space and a meeting space and a base for which Ghana Yurta require 
Why um, are the word non-Ghana youth? What, what does that mean? What's the definition? This is part of our reconciliation action plan. What's non-Ghana youth? They can understand Ghana youth, but what's non-Ghana youth? Well, I can't send my boys down there. Take that on notice. Um, I imagine that we are talking about Aboriginal people and a place where the Ghana, um, as we say, Ghana Yurt will be based. Are you working with well, I suggest Aboriginal you change people? that to other Indigenous something. Because non Ghana it means everybody. Councillor, your mic, if you're going to keep talking. Pardon? Uh, your mic's off, if you're oh. going to make further comment. Um, well, yeah, look, I, I really hate getting this when it's a fait accompli, it's done deal. Non Ghana youth means it's open to all youth. If it's Ghana and non Ghana, who isn't in that Venn diagram? Nobody. Um, so um, this is very close to built a uh, dense residential um, Bowdoin Bronx developments. Um, and we've agonised over the sort of uses. And this isn't a use, use that's open to the public, and it's a parkland building. I, I just can't understand the cavalier way. We just say, well, because it's Ghana, we put it there. So, uh, no, I'm, I'm not keen at the moment at all. It should be in the fabric. Just a reminder, Councillor, you can't flag your support otherwise for the recommendation of this meeting. I'm not keen at all. They should be, uh, they should be Councillor Sims. found in the fabric. Mm. Councillor Sims. To respond to Councillor Moran's question of what is the exceptional circumstance, I mean, I would argue that the exceptional circumstance is that the Ghana people have native title over the land. It is actually Aboriginal land. Um, and uh, so, therefore, um, they uh, have a right to um, access the space, and I would argue a different uh, process is appropriate um, in this circumstance in recognition of the native title of the Ghana people, um, and given the fact that, you know, sovereignty was never ceded of, of this land. So, um, I am supportive. I am, um, I am supportive of this, um, and I would like to see it um, get, uh, get support. Two words right out of my mouth. Uh, members, Councillor Noel, then Councillor Dock. I mean, if we're talking about uh, it's people have been looking at this, it's been empty for a while. What were the other sort of uh, proposals for this space, um, you know, for its uses, etc.? I mean, it hasn't been empty for that long. It was a, quite a thriving restaurant. Councillor, really Councillor, was the admin will give us the history on it for a start. I'll need to take that on notice to see whether there have been any other approaches. But as I think as Deputy CEO, do you on Tom? Tom, can you have got the history, please? Yeah. Tom yeah. So if we could just have a couple of mics off. Um, Tom's here and obviously is our Head of Commercial um, and Property Leasing Licensing and um, has far more detailed knowledge. But um, over the past few years, uh, it's a state heritage building. It's actually quite hard um, to lease this out. It took quite a while to get the restaurant in. Um, and I understand that the restaurant, um, you know, wasn't able to make it a sustainable commercial enterprise at that location. Um, Tom, do you have anything further to add, please? Through you, presiding member, in response to the question, first of all, it is indeed correct, it is a difficult space to lease. Um, various <coughs> reasons. One is the amount of work it's required from a capital perspective to bring it up to a standard, um, being an old rail railway station. The other, the other element of R is the space it actually allocates or has around it in regards to uh, basically being able to establish itself as a successful business. Um, without going or breaching confidentiality in regards to leases, um, let's just say that uh, anyone who has went in there in the past have struggled from a commerciality to make it a success, um, and thus uh, the opportunity has arisen in regards to this. It is a very low rent base. We've had it market tested, and the reality is it's very, been very, very hard for us to get people to actually want to go to that location. And so, following on to that, I mean, so obviously it, it's, uh, it needs a lot of work, etc., and is, uh, obviously doesn't lend itself to too much you know, else other than a place where people gather. So, I take it that's that's where a sort of comment where it is just can be a hub. I mean, and uh, it's uh, what is, how much of a connection has it with, you know, some of the side of the railway tracks? Um, obviously, to the actual remainder of the parklands, it is actually a very, very difficult connection, hasn't it? So you remember, yes. Well, no, it hasn't. It was between um, Moral Drive, 
Grant Road. Can, and councillor, you're, you're Mike, and we're skipping the order. If you wish to give feedback, we'll let Councillor Noel finish, then go to Councillor Noel, and then come to you. Just as, a, just as, a, as an initial point, that I, I can see, I, I can understand all the issues you have with it and, and why it would be something that would be suitable. I mean, I don't know about consultation, etc. how far, um, and the interest uh, from other community members, but I suppose this process alone, because we're not making any decisions or anything like that, at least opens it up for people to give us a comment for us to be able to make, uh, um, you know, take further deliberation as we have to make some decision later. Well, friends, this is it. They have Councillor Moran, Councillor Moran, you'll address your remarks through the chair and you'll wait for your turn, please. You can talk as many times as you want, but you can wait your turn. We will let Councillor Noel finish. Then we'll go to Councillor Donovan, and then if you wish to add, we'll come back to you. Councillor Noll, are you done? Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Thank you. Um, look, I think it's a, a great solution that we have found somewhere that um, the uh, Kani Yurta Aboriginal Corporation like and want um, within the parklands and given uh, their connection to the land and particularly along the river there being such an important location, I think it's, it's um, it's, uh, yeah, it's great that we've got a building there that they choose. I'm more curious, in the report it talks to, it's the only building that was deemed suitable based on the criteria that were mentioned. Was there, is there any more information behind that? We looked at the uh, uh, spaces in, in, in the Kettle Light Centre. Yeah. Uh, they, they were really suitable. Uh, that this was this was a vacant building at the time and uh, it, it, it ticked the boxes that they, they were after had um, uh, spaces for, for, for meeting, for, for office spaces, had car parking, uh, and it, it also that connection to the parklands mm -hmm. so where you know, their plan their plans or their loose plans are that you know they, they might be able to do some, some work with Ghana youth uh, in, in the parklands and do some cultural cultural training uh, and cultural modeling just across the road there which is Got significance to, to to Ghana culturally, historically. Tom, did you have sorry? Did you have more to add to that? Sorry, just in support of what Martin has been indicating, there also was a clear spiritual connection in regards to that section of the land, um, and due to the vacancy that uh, came about through a tenant and whatever, it, it certainly is something that's attracted that party to that space. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's important to note that in regards to that space being a spiritual connection. Thank you. Councillor Donovan, anything no. further? No. Councillor Moran, did you wish to? I challenge the uh, spirituality of that. It's the golf course on one side, Wilmore Hill Drive on the other. Yeah. It's the clips or redevelopment of the park lands with the hard stand uh, basketball courts, and then it's the Greek soccer courts. So I think that's pushing it. The building's jammed between a, a very large train line and a very busy road and it's pitch black back at night. I think it is one of the most unsuitable places that you would send young you know, young people down there, possibly in evening classes, um, that I could even think of. It's sort of like pushing them out of the way into the dark park lands. We surely should have found them somewhere much more suitable in the frame of the city, well lit, well served by public transport. This place isn't. There are no buses that go down Moorland Drive that I'm aware of. Um, I think it should go out to EOI and it should be a use that's accessible to the public. I don't see it any different. I don't see it because it's an Indigenous organisation, it makes it any different to any, to any other private organisation that we're giving rooms to. I think it's outrageous. Councillor Simpson, Councillor Kira. Well, I think that the Ghana community are the people that will be the authority on whether or not there is a cultural connection um, to the land. Um, and we know that there is a, a significant um, cultural and spiritual relationship with Ghana people and the parklands. Um, and I also understand that the proximity of the parklands is going to enable particular cultural aspects of the training and so on. So I think this is an entirely um, appropriate centre. Um, and I'll just reiterate my previous point that I think there is um, an exception to our um, usual process on the basis that the Ghana people have native title and that this is Ghana land. Um, and on that basis, I think it is entirely appropriate that the matter be approached um, in this way. Well, anything the Ghana people want to build on the part and vote okay. Councillor, Councillor, Councillor Kurt, did you wish no, to... No, no, no. no. Members, was there anything further? 
to be added. No, I might just I might just make a couple of remarks. Um, I completely agree with Councillor Sims um, about the Ghana being the authority on, on what's spiritually significant to them um, and, and what may not be. And yes, absolutely, the exceptional circumstance would be that it's their land anyway. Um, that's the the logical progression. The logical progression um, I would follow, and I'm you know I'm quite comfortable with the process that's been undertaken to date, and I I was at least aware of. Um, uh, the length of time that they were looking at options both in this building and the building next door um, as well. Um, I'm just uh, focusing on, on precisely what's in front of us here. This came through APLA and then then came through to council in in a, in a related related point. Can you just remind me what that was? In a, sorry, will you clarify in a related? Point. The process so, has been, it's come through APLA. I'll, I'll hand it to you. Yeah. I, I, Thank you. I think, Chair, um, when APLA, what Council would have done was noted APLA's recommendation um, on the Council agenda. So APLA minutes come through to Council. Mm -hmm. This is a more detailed report um, to Committee and Council and um, separate to APLA. Mm -hmm. Understood. Um, and just in terms of, I mean, we're, all, we're all worried about cost. Um, at, at the moment here, um, what what discussions are being had between <coughs> all with the state and federal government? What avenues, uh, funding streams are they looking to access? Um, and if we undertake these lease negotiations and state and federal funding falls over and is not pursued, are you going to be bringing between three hundred thirty thousand and four hundred forty six thousand dollars as a budget bid for us to refit this facility? Um, so to answer your first question, uh, the discussions have been with Indigenous Land and Sea Corporation, which is um, the federal Australian government, and also with Indigenous Business Australia and state government as well. Um, so through um, the, the state arm um, under the Premier. Um, my understanding is, and Marty can confirm because I understand he's been keeping close eye on this, um, those conversations have been constructive and positive in terms of being able to source the funding required to get the building up to scratch. Um, however, um, they are at that point now where the certainty needed over the lease is um, making that a tight um, tightrope um, because without uh, they can't secure the funding without certainty of space. So that's why we wanted to commence negotiations um, to enable those uh, funding applications to continue. Um, in terms of whether this will come through at a budget bid, um, the, this project has taken um, quite a few years, so it has been in our stretch reconciliation action plan. Um, noting how long these negotiations and discussions take, um, I'd be surprised if it was um, a, you know, ready to be assessed or considered by council um, as part of this round of budget, but who knows. Um, and um, I think the report does make it clear that um, anything um, that comes back in terms of an ask of the City of Adelaide would come back through um, a report to committee and to council for members to make an informed decision. And so the lease, just remind me, that, that's peppercorn essentially, we're, we're just providing the space for them. Through the chair, correct. Yes, yeah, so I, I would just highlight that I, I would consider that um, given it, given our size and given our level of government, I would consider that our contribution to the project. Personally, I'd be very reluctant to, to go and spend another half a million dollars on it. For example, worthiness, you know, set aside, there are many not-for-profits out there um, that do a lot of good work in many different areas. So um, uh, I'll just leave those thoughts with you. Can I just have one? Any one further feedback, Councillor Moran? Yes, um, I understood that we couldn't. Um, uh, legally charge petrol rents anymore, but we had to charge commercial rents. I remember when we used to run the market, we leased that to ourselves as a petrol, same as the aquatic centre. But some 10 years ago, I understood the anti competitive laws came in that we had to charge a commercial rent. Perhaps Tom might be best placed to answer that. I don't know, but I remember we had to change all our commercial rents and then pay ourselves back. You know, but, 
uh, through you, presiding member, council has own determination can decide to charge whatever rent base they want, uh, they wish. However, typically we go out to market rent to actually look to see what the value of the asset is, but they can determine if it wishes to do a one dollar, ten dollar, ten thousand dollar rent. They can determine whatever that is. Council's discretion. Has that been a recent change, Tom? No, no through you, uh, through you, presiding member, customer owned council have always been able to do that. However, council asked us to extract the best commercial value out of our commercial assets. Um, I think so we're I'm not sure that's right because we went to the council listed during the time that we were renting. Councillor, your, your mic, your mic. To ourselves, and the legislation changed that said we couldn't because then we put ourselves unfairly in competition with the private private sector. And that was about when we, it was a year before we handed the market over to the private subsidiary. Could, could we check on that? Yeah. I don't agree with Ben's on rent. Sorry, I remember. I think take that on rent. Well, I can't, but I think where Councillor uh, Morales is coming from is effectively the anti competition policy. Um, and in reality, is yes, where we are directly competing with the light business, for instance, our, our, our car parks, for example, um, where we could go out and normally undercut competitors and whatever that would be looked at in regards to, although we can't charge our fees. However, when it comes to our own assets, we determine who goes in our assets and we can determine our own rent. Well, I was around too, and I think we really should check this. I'm just not being difficult. When we had the next generation, um, with under Andrew Atkinson, we had to charge commercial rent then. And what we did in cases like the uh, Indigenous building here, we would charge commercial rent and then um, give them a, um, a gift of something a year. And we went through all sorts of machinations through that budget when the law was changed. So if as you say, it hasn't changed back in 10 years, yes. I mean, that's what could, I would yeah, prefer. Could, could we get an undertaking and, and clarity on that point, And the reason please, we Tom. did that is so that when we looked at our budget bottom line, we saw a real budget bottom line. We saw the commercial rent we paid, and then we requested if we wanted to turn it into a peppercorn rent. Peppercorn rent, but we just didn't charge a peppercorn rent. So I'll, I'll come back. Thank you, Councillor. I think it's Mark, a very good if, idea to do it that if way. If the CEO could give an undertaking that we could get that if information. The chair will provide that information before. Because I think that's what we should yeah. do anyway. It's a fairer, clearer way of looking at budget. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Sims. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Look, I just wanted to highlight um, to members this section from the Stretch Reconciliation Action Plan 2018 to 221, Section 5, Cultural Identity and Heritage. The City of Adelaide acknowledges the continuing cultural and spiritual obligations the Ghana people have in their lands and seas and will seek opportunities to recognise Ghana heritage through physical features of the City of Adelaide and by supporting community cultural activities. I would suggest that this proposal is completely um, in keeping with that. Um, and it's not much to ask that we make a contribution, whether that be through peppercorn rent or um, other forms of um, financial support, which um, I think are entirely appropriate. It's consistent with um, our reconciliation action plan. This council has a very proud tradition of working with Aboriginal people to advance these issues. Um, and I would hope that that would continue. But can I just uh, add to that? Uh, I'm not suggesting that we don't help the Ghana find an office. I'm saying this is an inappropriate office. The office should be where it's easy to get to, where it's well lit in the fabric of the city. And when you're saying that we're not in competition, we are in competition because otherwise they would have to rent from another building owner who then we could uh, cause that to be a peppercorn rent by saying rent from Joe Bloggs in Victoria Square, we will bequeath you the, the rent for that year, thereby doing it that way. But we're not dudding another business owner by shoving him into a building that we don't know what else to do with. So I don't think that we should cover this with, you know, great, you know, we're fantastic gardens. Thank you, Councillor We're not, Rambert. we're sending them to a shitty place we're, in the dark, out of the way. Language, please, Because Councillor. you cannot, we're probably getting because to the point we where we're debating the matter and we have to debate it in the council chamber. Okay, I'll just finish what I'm saying, thank you. Um, because we cannot find anybody else to take that building. That's what is behind this. No great uh, speaking to the land. That is all parklands that's been completely built on with sports field, European sports fields. So I, I, it annoys me that you're putting it under the guise of being nice to the Ghana people when you're putting them in a highly inappropriate spot. 
Lord Mayor, did you have anything to say? Um, thank you, Chair. Look, uh, just to, to um, for the rest of the council, is this actually to come through the um, Reconciliation Committee in the first instance? It has been a piece of work that has been undertaken over a, a very long period of time. The Ghana Yurta um, Aboriginal Corporation is absolutely thrilled with this location and they are, uh, they've actually already gone out publicly hoping that we will support it. Um, it does talk to the stretch wrap. It does actually, uh, has gone through APLA for its advice, which came through council and, um, and it will go through our chamber next week. Um, we, we aren't putting them in some desolate place. This is actually, we've worked very closely with Uncle Geoffrey and the Gunna Yuta to actually make sure that they get the facility that they need. Um, part of the criteria was that they did have space for the um, uh, trainees in terms of, particularly if they're actually doing um, work with our horticulture team and in the um, parklands, and also that they actually could have parking and office space. So there was multiple, and we did look at many, many locations to try and assist them. So um, I actually thank you, Martin, in particular, for the work that you've done on this, and um, uh, look forward to taking it into council next week. Thank you. No further speakers on that matter. We'll move on to the next item, 4.5, reimagining New Year's Eve. I'll pass to Consigo. Thanks, Chair. This is um, an extensive report, as you would have noted, and it's responding to the recent resolution of Council, once again. Uh, New Year's Eve is a very important event for our community, and clearly there are opportunities to work towards a hybrid event which has been outlined in the, um, in the report. There are examples of hybrid events occurring around the world um, and other places, and um, there's no doubt that subject to the scope, um, there is a potential for us to work along those lines. The scope is the key question, and the, uh, the amount of, of, of change that we put in place uh, will determine what we take to our budget process. Um, if there is an increase in cost, we will need to take it as a budget item and it will be listed as with other projects, which we discussed tonight. So um, uh, the point I wanted to make here though is that there is clear potential for a hybrid kind of project to be worked up and um, that, uh, that opportunity is very clear. Um, there were some concerns about existing contracts and limitations, but we do have quite a clear path forward should Council resolve to pursue that way forward. So um, that's all I need to say. Um, I guess the key question, and maybe the staff can clarify, should there be no increase in budget, what opportunity is there for a hybrid event? Um, because from what I can see, the majority of the report is based on a slight increase to budget. So could you explain that for the benefit of the councillors? Thank you, Mark, through the chair. Um, as outlined in the paper, any hybrid model would obviously involve some budget increase. Um, it would be challenging to deliver something um, of the same impact size scale experience that we currently get for the spend on fireworks within that existing $75,000 budget. What we would propose for the first year, as mentioned, is a hybrid approach, which we would look at decreasing the spend on fireworks by approximately half, um, and then going with 100k spend on the alternative, looking at a budget of um, approximately 135k for the first year of the hybrid. So I think that's an increase of 60k. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, thank you, and thank you for the examples. Um, they actually don't photograph really well, which is interesting. They're very different when you see them. And um, a specific one in terms of the link on the 26, the, there's some images in the second link, uh, was the hybrid world uh, one that happened in 2018. And that was done with um, mists and sprays across the river and was actually really quite uh, amazing and it was spectacular. We had a uh, huge, huge turnout for that. Um, so I was just to that end, I was wondering, um, Kiama, who did the fireworks laser combination, do we have any photographs from Kiama to see what they actually did? That was the um, uh, the council that actually did the dual one that interplayed the lasers and the fireworks. 
um, through the presiding member, no, we don't, but we can certainly um, contact them and ask for those images. Um, I can see if I can get any footage of the uh, hybrid world one, if um, that would help councillors. But I, th um, I think uh, there's some uh, some good proposals to consider. Um, I uh, I still would love to keep the fireworks as part of the tradition long term, um, but I do actually like the idea of actually bringing in some new technology and doing some hybrid work and uh, to, to also demonstrate some new technology. Councillor Sims, then Councillor Norman. Yeah, I, I'm supportive of this um, as well. Thank you for the record. Um, I think you know it makes sense to constantly review what we um, do and how we um, approach these kinds of events, particularly with changing technology, but also changing community expectations. And you know there has been a debate about the use of fireworks, um, given the uh, the summer that we've had, the climate emergency across the country, the and the fact that we've had, you know, literally firestorms around the country. Um, I think it's appropriate that there's been a debate about fireworks in that context. Um, this looks to me to be a good opportunity for us to try something new um, and something that is truly world class as well. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of places do fireworks. Terrific point of difference for um, the city of Adelaide to use drone technology and, and other things. So, um, yes, I'm really excited about this and um, I look forward to seeing what it, um, it looks like as part of the fabulous uh, New Year's Eve event. Assuming, of course, it gets a backing, not preempting a decision of, um, of council. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Noel, then Councillor Kira. Um, again, it's, it's, it, I agree, it, it's, uh, it's an opportunity to try and experiment with new ideas and, and, uh, and, and take ideas from around the world to see what it is that we can make our event more special, considering I mean, the world has fireworks, but it's about the one we have that's important, not the one that we see on television. And I think we, we need to ensure that that experience that we're providing is one that is becoming enhanced for what we're doing. The simple fact is that you want to keep having people come to congregate together and to celebrate together. And that's part of our, our brief as, as, a, as the capital city that we encourage that. And it should be interesting, you know, with a, a with a nominal cost and uh, see what that looks like if it's $50,000, as long as it doesn't impact, let's face it, the fireworks is not the most expensive component here. And it's certainly making sure that we, we have all the rest in the right, yeah. Uh, you know, done correctly so that people are able to come here and, and obviously celebrate. But it is uh, interesting to see how we can put a, a, an event or a, a show together using, I mean, you can appreciate steam and things like that, but other people use smoke machines and things like that as well to create the backgrounds uh, for that. So, you know, and again, if this is part of a, an evolving project, that we can assess a bit more regularly because that way you see as the technology comes up that we can say okay this is what we're building to and this is you know and, and within a cost base that uh, we're able to deliver this considering all the constraints that we and all of the other competing needs we have. Councillor Kira. Um, just some uh, just some food for thought. Um, the on the Adelaide Now, uh, the advertiser website, um, the story about this uh, proposal, uh, the uh, poll that was run uh, said, uh, would you support a state-of-the-art laser and light show for the Elder Park New Year's Eve event? Uh, that was the question. Uh, the response was, um, those who responded, yes, it's worth the extra cost, uh, was 21%. Uh, those who responded, uh, no, fireworks are cheaper and better. It was 79%. That was um, as of last night. So that's well and truly the poll had run its course. Um, well, the, the poll had well and truly run its course. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Rob. Um, so that's just this is one food for thought item. The other food for thought is that we've we've got uh, some numbers here in the cost. Now, at the very low end, we we've, we've got a uh, hundred. Uh, approximately $100,000. At the higher end, we've got a half a million dollars. I suspect that in order for, for this, for lasers and things to be anything more than a, a damn squib, uh, we'll, it will have to be somewhere more than the absolute low bar. And if you just go in, if we just come in and say it's $200,000, that's still close to the low end. In five years uh, of having uh, an extra bit of uh, gigaws and jazzed up lighting that no one seems to particularly want. 
After five years of those, we would have uh, wasted a million dollars, which could pay for the permanent uh, light fixtures on O'Connell Street, could pay for all of it. Uh, now, this is just food for thought. Um, I would say, and obviously these are my concerns uh, at this juncture, um, so I'm not debating, um, but look, I, I think we ought to consider this. I, I think we do as councillors have to take heed of what the public is expecting from us, public expectations. Um, my view is that apart from the comments I made on the night, which I do feel, continue to feel strongly about, uh, and that is that uh, you know, eliminating um, an art form that is thousands of years old should not be done lightly. Um, but my view also is that the public will see this as an, uh, um, an element of, of profligacy, uh, an unwarranted profligate uh, sort of uh, um, measure that, that they don't want uh, and is clearly just temporary. I think that we councillors must really think carefully about the, the juncture we're in now, um, given the, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the slugs to the economy that the public want us to be doing stuff that is relevant, that helps them, uh, lowers the cost base and gets patrons back into shops rather than experimenting with sort of weird laser beams that end up looking quite frequently uh, like cheap computer graphics, like a, an Atari 900 in the sky or something like that. So just leave it at that. Okay. Thank you, Jesse. Councillor Simpson, just a reminder, we're not debating this, the merits or otherwise. Of this. Look, I, I don't want to drone on, um, but um, <laughs> look, and I'm not a big one for um, being focused on uh, polls, um, Councillor Kira, but here's another one. Um, I did see um, this poll on ABC uh, News Adelaide earlier today. Would you like to see a laser light show instead of fireworks at the Elder Park New Year's Eve event this year? And response, 71% said yes, 29% said no. Number of respondents, over 2,000. Now, look, you know, polls are not the be all and end all. Adelaide. And we do have Adelaide. to, you know, um, take that with a pinch of salt. However, um, if the argument is that there is not community support for this, I would suggest that the highly representative ABC poll um, with 2,000 um, respondents or more um, is something that should be taken into account. And look, I actually think the community expects us to look at new ideas. Um, we talk about Adelaide being a city of first, we talk about Adelaide being a leader, um, and I'm tired of us just, you know, kowtowing to what Sydney and Melbourne do. Um, it'd be great for us to actually do something that is bold and different and exciting that really puts our New Year's Eve celebration on the map. And um, I think using new technology in this way would do that. Councillor Donovan, then Councillor Moran. Thank you for bringing the report in. It's, it was interesting to look at the detail of the options. Um, my thinking would simply be to go back to the origin of the motion that was put up, which my understanding was around the environmental impact of fireworks. And I feel like if we come to this point of a hybrid option, I just want to be clear on what we're trying to achieve, because I think this are we trying to achieve an amazing event and we're looking at the drones because this is going to create an amazing new visual display? That's one option. Are we looking at a hybrid event because it's going to improve the environmental outcomes? In which case, if based on the information that you've, um, you've pulled together, which has been really helpful, possibly this is not the best way forward because we end up needing to probably still keep the fireworks going to some extent possibly add some smoke effect for the drones to be useful in the laser. So I just want to be really clear if we're going to proceed with some kind of hybrid option or if we are looking at the drones and if the drones still need some kind of smoke, are we actually achieving the intent for which the motion was initially put up, which I believe was for environmental reasons, around bushfires, around climate change, um, as opposed to create to specifically create an amazing visual output. So. Um, that would that would just be where I would be moving to in terms of the decision making within council that we distinguish between these two things and we're clear about why we're trying to achieve something because if it's going to be at an extra you know couple hundred thousand dollars potentially and it's simply for the entertainment outcome well that's a that's a different decision to the other effects that might be flowing on from it and I think that was drawn out in the report which was really useful so thank you for pulling that together because probably it wouldn't otherwise have been realised that we need the smoke for the drones. Councillor Moran and Councillor Kerry. Uh, yes, look, I just want to correct something on the uh, Adelaide Now um, 
thing. So they, the first question was actually, would you like to spend X number of dollars to change to no, a hybrid not. or a laser no, light? Yes, it was. Um, read it out then, Jesse. I would stand oh, it it. Remarks through the chair, please. We're not here to discuss the Adelaide Now poll, well, which is not an official consultation, nor are we here to discuss it, the sir, Facebook it poll. Just, well, not happy. the door's been open there. It wasn't just, do you want this or do you want that? It said, well, are you prepared to increase, carry the increased cost of that? And the answer was no. So it was a push poll, and as um, we often see. Um, I would prefer to see fireworks um, us to be a leader in this and get rid of fireworks. We were we dragged our heels on our our event by not back, not uh, skipping them like the other major sophisticated cities did and plunged on. Um, you saw the other night, yesterday, uh, uh, last night, how the beautiful light display in the Queen Adelaide room. Um, was indeed beautiful, and I think one of the best things the Adelaide City's ever seen done is the uh, lighting up of the facade of the building with the lights for the fest one of the festivals, or the large balloons that floated over the torrents. Crackers are easy; um, they're lovely, they're they're fun, uh, they're a bit loud. But um, the only reason I think a hybrid, uh, I suggest that uh, the move is moving a hybrid in that people do have a, a, an affection for crackers and we can um, phase in a brave new world. But um, I think I prefer just not to have the cracks at all, but uh, I support the hybrid and understand the reasons. So, uh, Councillor Kerr. Yeah, to, for clarification, I've got the poll in front of me. Um, so the poll is the last time I'll entertain this yeah, poll. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's been raised. Yeah, I think it needs to be clarified. How many respondents? Yeah. Just, to, cla just to clarify. Adelaide respondents, not Australian respondents. Okay. It's a far more relevant poll. It's Adelaide, it's Adelaide now. Remarks through the chair, please. Um, the, the question is, uh, would you support a state-of-the-art laser and light show for the Elder Park New Year's Eve event? Question mark. Answers, yes, it's worth the extra cost, 21%. No, fireworks are cheaper and better, 79%. So I don't, anyway, that, I think council can make their minds up based on, on, on that poll and that question. Um, I would just like to add that I think Councillor Donovan, Councillor Donovan raised a good point. Um, if we're looking at the environmental aspects, if we're doing this for environmental reasons, um, Laser beams and drones require an electricity cost. Probably it was just be weird not, to, cost. Not, to, not to be debating. Yeah, point. but we've had sure. essentially debate. Uh, these are my concerns. This is not debate. The, my concerns are at this juncture. Thank you, Councillor. Um, uh, Deputy Lord, my concerns are that if, if that is the, the, the motive, well, laser beams, drones all incur an electricity cost, which is not the case with uh, fireworks. Um, uh, the actual carbon footprint of fireworks is manifestly extremely low, uh, when given they have once a year or whatnot, compared to all the other activities we're, going, we're doing. And um, I, my other concern is that the other purported reasoning that somehow there's a link between city-based uh, fireworks uh, and bushfires is Patently bizarre. I, I, you know, anyone who suggests that's the, that there is such a link is not really speaking to reality. I, I humbly submit. Um, so I, I'd say, with those, with those, with those uh, concerns, with the, with those concerns in mind, um, I think my my other fear is that we're going to end up spending money on gigors. We're going to see there will be a public swell of demand for the return of fireworks should we begin phasing them out. It will happen because they have such a um, such a timeless appeal. My concern is we'll end up going down this path. We'll end up spending a million bucks in five years easily, uh, and in the meantime, deprive um, uh, other more worthwhile projects uh, like North Adelaide. I'm only going to allow questions on this topic further. Councillor Cross, did you have a question? Thank you. I just have a question, don't want to any debate. Um, but considering that there's a, it is a pretty high cost um, to get to 500,000, can we sponsor, work with um, people sponsoring the event and maybe they can advertise um, Whatever laser and how it's all done, but um, you know, could we work towards that and to eliminate some of that cost? Through the chair, we currently have a sponsor for the fireworks, and the answer to that is we will be seeking uh, certainly commercial um, alliance to, with uh, the brand, perhaps with any new activity that you decide we should do. Okay. Any further questions on this topic? If not, thank you, Christy and Noni. We will move on to 4.6.
City of Adelaide, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander employment. And I think Mark is going to lead off for Vanessa. Thank you. Through the chair, this is again in response to a resolution of council. Yeah, yeah, sorry, can we can we can we are we able to get the air con? <laughs> oh, we are nearly finished. There's a lot of hot air in the room, but I'll continue. Uh, yes, please. Thanks, Chair. So again, this is in response to a resolution of council, as you recall. The stretch for conciliation action plan already contains commitments relating to Indigenous employment. Um, the administration is working to ensure delivery of the plan's requirements and, uh, and I believe we're on track with that. Um, Vanessa though, is here tonight to answer any questions that you may have regarding the report. Thanks. Thank you. Members, are there any questions or feedback? Just no questions. It's very easy to understand. Well done, Vanessa. <laughs> Thank you for your feedback, Councillor. <coughs> Members? Questions? Councillor Sims? Oh. Oh. No, I'm just going to say um, I think this is, uh, you know, really good that we are making uh, progress in this regard. Uh, you able to, sorry, just explain to me how the, is this in response to Councillor Martin's motion or is this work that was already being done and you're advising of work that's already in train or is this new work? Um, through the Chair, this is in response to the motion. It's really just explaining the work that we're already doing and some of the additional initiatives that we will do in response to the motion. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's really good. Further questions, members? If not, thank you, Vanessa. We'll move on to item 47, Strategic Plan Progress Report, quarter 2, 2019 to 2020. Sue, welcome. Just introduce this one before Sue sits down. So you'll be aware of our reporting on, on the current strategic plan, 2016 to 2020. Um, it's self-explanatory as a report goes. It's a quarterly report that you will receive on a regular basis. Uh, we will be undertaking a closeout report with full details of progress and status after the 30th of June. So that'll be a more detailed report. But Sue is here to answer any questions you may have in the meantime. Thank you, members. Any questions on the second quarter report? No. Thank you, Sue. But stay in the chair because we'll move on to 4.8, City of Adelaide 2020 to 2024 strategic plan. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. You would know that setting a forward strategy for a, um, a new council is critically important and it's a requirement of the legislation, the Local Government Act. It requires us to adopt a new strategy. Um, in developing this plan, we've had a lot of touch points with you as council members. Um, we've had good feedback from the community as we've engaged, and um, the, uh, the report that's before you is, a, is, is providing a short form strategic plan, which we've discussed in the past. The intent would be um, subject to approval by council next week to develop a long form plan that will accompany it. So there's a bit of work to be done yet, but this short form plan really sets out the broad strategies as we have worked on over the last six to 12 months. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Members, discussion and feedback on this one. Lord Mayor. Uh, look, I just want to um, uh, thank the team for the work that's been done and for the contribution of all the members. Um, I think. Uh, one of the things that we, if we could each individually do, is just cross-check that our key um, deliverables that we'd like in this term of council are mm -hmm. in the plan, and we've done a little bit of work. There's a few things that probably need to be brought through, just some minor things that need to be brought through next week. Um, but I think that looks great to be able to capture it in that way, and um, and also the actions that sit behind it. So thank you very much, Claire and the team. It's been really excellent work. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any further points for discussion? Um, Lord Mayor, did you have further to add? No, I think I'll have to do it in the chamber if there's any If you wish to make, yeah, 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 if you wish to make amendments, you need to um, move them in the chamber. I'll just, I'll just highlight the two five, some of the feedback I gave last time about reducing the cost base of doing business in the city. 
Um, currently, it reads reduce and streamline council policies, permits, and fees to reduce the cost base of doing business in the city. I would really like to see just reduce the cost base doing business in the city as its own standalone item, but um, I, I might seem to make. No, 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 you, you can't. I'm just, I'm just saying what I would like. I'm not flagging a decision I'm, either, I'm either way. I'm say what I would like to do. You're welcome yeah. to. But, um, <laughs> Any um, further feedback, members, or questions? I was just going to say it's probably easiest if um, members make those changes in the chamber next week. Yes, yeah. um, it, that's okay. Thank well, that's you. That's the only option. Yeah. Except if you're cheating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for that. We'll now move on to item five exclusion of the public. There is one item for consideration in confidence. May I remove Councillor Ibrahim today, a seconder. Councillor Kira, is there any discussion on this item? No. If none, Councillor Ibrahim Zay, sum up. Members, I put that to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Members of the gallery and staff, thank you for your attendance of this 